Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are so excited to have our friend, Dr. Rhonda Rorick, joining us, owner of Career Balance LLC. We're going to talk today more about the work she does, how she can help you with uh, her coaching skills and team building skills. I know we discussed that before and so much more. How are you today? I'm doing really well, Jill. How are you? I'm doing great. So first and foremost, great to see you here on Zoom. We're also live on the Zoomcast for those of you just listening today. Uh, Tell us a little bit about uh, who you are, what you do, and uh, of course, we'll get into today's topic momentarily. Sure. So Dr. Rhonda Rorig, I am a coach and I do professional development training. And um, yeah, I I work with groups, uh, management teams um, for anyone who's looking to level up. And uh, I do that either via Zoom or we, I've done coaching over the phone. Um, but I also, of course, love face to face. I like seeing <laughs> like seeing people. There's nothing like um, sitting across from someone uh, uh, talking with them. So got it. And you go to the website. It's careerbalance.org. Book a coffee chat. That's right. Uh, you yeah. could just chat. Uh, get to know each other. There's some great testimonials. We'll talk about those later. I know for today, I want to get right to our topic. Uh, uh, we're going to discuss, well, I'll let you bring it up. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, sure. So um, today, I thought I'd really talk about um, self-awareness. Um, that's one of the uh, biggies that I um, uh, we end up talking about in coaching is just the component of self-awareness. And um, how that really works is you know, when you are self-aware, you are better able to um, to do something about that, to to change behavior, to level up. Um, so if you, you can't fix something that you don't know is broken. So um, through an emotional intelligence survey uh, or emotional quotient, it's the measurement of emotional intelligence, mm-hmm. we can kind of see where are those areas that um, uh, that we want to focus on. So um, uh, a little bit of, of stats, um, when you look at self-awareness and self-management, um, there's studies done that, that really indicate if you are self-aware, you have about a 50-50% chance of doing something with mm. that, of managing that, that behavior. But if you are unaware, you do you you don't have that self-awareness, you're virtually, you know, you can't change it. You're, you're not aware of it in order to change it. So that um, identifying your awareness is is really key, is is a huge, huge, huge step. Got it. So, so self-awareness, really like yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Self-awareness. All right. So let's get started. Now, first of all, you have some great stats here. If you want to talk about, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about what I'm looking at. (laughs) So, um, so just that whole self-awareness, if you have that self-awareness, 51% uh, is really the number that you could potentially change that. that Okay. Um, and 49% is no, you can't manage that behavior. So really, we're looking at about a 50-50 um, uh, uh, spread there. Mm-hmm. But if, if your self-awareness, and this is from um, uh, from a study in 1999, uh, if your self-awareness is at 4%, you are virtually you know 96% chance of not managing that particular behavior. Wow. Because you're not aware of of the behavior. Yeah. You're not, you're not aware. So how can you change something that you don't know that you need to change? Good point. Right? right. Well, yeah. Give us it that example. Sense. I like the first example best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It makes sense. <laughs> so so I have an example um working with a, a manager. And um, this manager uh, was really unaware that he's pretty demanding and pretty um, controlling. It can be abrasive and just not recognizing how how he was treating people. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, in talking with him, his concern was, you know, nobody respects me. They're, they don't um, look at, you know, the competence that I have. They're not, you know, um, 
uh, uh, they're not thinking that I'm that I'm valuable. And so he kept trying to overcome that by being yep. even more demonstrating that, hey, I'm going to prove to them that, mm-hmm. you know what, I I know my stuff. And um, we did an assessment and and uh, kind of looked at where his uh, um, behavioral characteristics were. And he really realized that, wow, I, I'm kind of set apart from everyone on this whole behavioral thing. I like really see things differently. And um, it was really uh, a key awareness that, wow, I, I guess I thought everybody kind of saw the world the way I mm-hmm. see the world. And um, it wasn't negative. There's not a value judgment on it. It's just different, a different way of looking at it. And what he brings to the table is incredible, his perspective. Um, so really looking through, you know, um, uh, uh, that dynamic was able to, you know, soften uh, in the areas that he needed to soften and really focus and ramp up on mm-hmm. the that he naturally had and naturally moved into a different role within the same management team. So it was really um, uh transforming I think for everyone that uh he was allowed to be him be his hundred percent self but really recognizing and being aware of how he was coming across to other people so it was it was um really kind of a beautiful uh um display of of being aware and then being yeah. able to um, be <laughs> open enough I've been told yeah. I come across very demanding and controlling. So my, my, uh, in, in my partners, in my relationships, <laughs> but I'm aware of it. <laughs> so I, I'm like, I could, I'm aware of it. I could change that behavior. Yes. But so I understand some people aren't aware, not that bad, but <laughs> right, right, right. Well, you know, awareness doesn't necessarily mean that you're to change, you know, I'm exactly aware of it and decide, you know what, well, that's okay. <laughs> I, I get it. Um, but it depends what you're wanting out of that. If it's, mm-hmm. if it's worth the change, then you know you can make the change. Right? <laughs> and did yeah, you... It's all about those motivations, too. Exactly. You know, what motivates you. Got it. And do you want to share another example with us? Sure. So um, another example I have is um, uh, an individual who is having some health challenges, personal health challenges. That was, she was kind of keeping those to herself. Mm -hmm. And um, along with, you know, family dynamics going on, um, some other uh, uh, kind of heavy things going on in her life. And um, she was really projecting that, you know, everyone's, you know, everyone's watching what time I'm coming in and when I'm leaving and, um, you know, judging me based on, you know, uh, her own perception. So she Mm -hmm. was, was in her mind thinking, okay, everyone's looking at me, everyone's, you know, judging me based on this, when the reality was, she was really judging herself. No one else was even thinking about those things, Mm -hmm. that she was bringing those those, um, projections onto herself. So bringing that awareness that, you know, um, no, not everyone is, is looking at, is looking at that, what's going on within you, and really, it came out that, yeah, I am, I'm putting those things on myself. Um, no one else is doing that. So really bringing that awareness, of, mm-hmm. uh, that's really what's happening. And that's going, what's happening in, in the situation, um, allowed her to really take a step back and, and really evaluate for herself, how was she treating herself in that? And really, she was beating herself up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Instead of really being kind and, um, and you know, a, a good question um, that kind of brings that back around is, you know, when you ask people, how would they treat someone else if they were dealing with the same situation you're dealing with? And that really opens their eyes because no one would treat our, we don't, we wouldn't treat our best friends sometimes the way we treat ourselves. True. And the things that we say to ourselves, we're not very kind often um, in our self-talk. So bringing that to awareness um, really helped her be uh, a better person um, inside. And it really impacted the way that she was working with her people she managed. Mm-hmm. So it was, um, that was good all around too. 
Aww. That's another good self-awareness. Self-awareness. It's good to be self-aware. We agree. I agree. And by the way, let's remind everyone how we can reach out to you. Could you share your contact information? You can reach me at my website at careerbalance.org. You can send me an email if you'd like at Rhonda, R-H-O-N-D-A, at careerbalance.org. Or you can pick up the phone, call me directly, 920-960-8821. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, let's continue. Uh, do you want to talk more about the fear of the unknown? Yeah, I think um, sometimes we get paralyzed mm-hmm. by fear. We we have these things that we've we've um, we've built up in our own mind um, these fears, and they just keep getting bigger and bigger. It kind of goes back to our, you know, what we tell ourselves. We tell ourselves, you know. Um, you know, we're not sure if we're smart enough to mm-hmm. do this. We're not sure if we're good enough. Um, we have all these doubts and they just keep getting larger and larger, which develops into this fear yep. of of not doing anything. You know, you get paralyzed by it. And um, really the thing that combats that is action. So whatever you fear, your action or doing something that moves you forward sort of cures that you know um it's kind of like dipping your toe in the water you know it's 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 cold but when you jump in yeah it's actually not so bad once you get in there so true (laughs) but but it's well it's tough making that first step and um and actually doing things you know it's 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 very similar to doing a a podcast for the first time Ah. You you just have to you do it and you find out that it's okay, you know, the, the world didn't end, um, you know, uh, you just, you just, you just do. So okay. action is your cure mm-hmm. for fear. So my that. sort of that, sort of that theme is, you know, the action curing fear and the, the being kind to yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that we, we can be, um, we can't overdo that. Well, perhaps some people can overdo this. True. But most of us um, uh, really taking that time to reflect um, is really, I think, key. And and really, those are some um, steps on how you build self-awareness. In case you were asking, you know, you're wondering, Jill, how you build self-awareness? Yeah, were good you point. Were you, were you wondering maybe how I, how I can build that? Yeah. Well, have some tips. Are we ready for it? Ready. Okay. Okay. So here are some of the tips. So um, if you want to practice your self-awareness, practice reflecting. Okay. For some people, this is really difficult. If you are a go, 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 this is the last thing you want to do is stop and reflect because you got too much stuff to do, right? Then to stop and reflect. But if you stop and pause and you take a reflection on how are you feeling right now in this moment and then naming it, which, what am I feeling? That is really a good indication of, of trying to get yourself self-aware, to, to recognize what are you feeling in this moment. Once you identify that moment, then it really is, you know, write it down. And describe it. What does it feel like? What does it look like? So that you can recognize that again. This this helps um, for people who who get really nervous. What does that nervousness feel like? What does it look like? How? What are the reactions that you have? Are your palms getting sweaty? Are you, um, you know, what's happening physically with your body? That's being self aware. Another tip. Oh. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm I'm on it. Yes. Okay. So another one is um, is to ask family members. Ask them um, to describe your strengths and your weaknesses. Ask a trusted friend to describe your strengths and weaknesses. Um, Not necessarily someone that's going to tell you what you want to hear. You know, it needs to be somebody that is true and um uh uh and truly knows you 
And then you can compare that with what you believe. Hmm. So, you know, of course you ask mom and mom's going to say, oh my gosh, you are just wonderful. Like you can't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. And you are, you know, um, and your friend may say, you know, listen, sister, (laughs) you, (laughs) you know, you've got a stubborn streak in you that is just, you know, uh, a mile long. So you can take that feedback and really hone in on, okay, um, I know I am stubborn, but I also know that I'm pretty, I'm a pretty kind person. And, and I, you know, I can be aware of that. So those are tips that you can, um, you can use to help yourself become more self-aware. Do you want another one? Yeah, we have time. Okay. Here's another one. Um, another one is you can write in a journal. So you can journal your emotions. You can journal how you were feeling. You can journal about significant events. And that also helps by that writing down and reflecting. It's another form of reflection okay. that you can um, become more self-aware. So all hmm. kinds of modalities you can use. Self-reflection. Get other people involved in your reflection. You can write about it. You could draw. Mm-hmm. I could not draw pictures, so they would not be that would not be a very good mode for me. Stick, stick people is about as far as I can draw. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to find out what it is for you that might really help. All right. And you mentioned you are the author of your life. Don't forget to be kind to yourself, uh, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And Absolutely. the importance of bringing our self-awareness. Could you just share how that can help us overall? So our self-awareness helping us overall, mm-hmm. it helps us with our relationships. Um, it can help us with our relationships with our family members, with our significant others, with our, um, our kids, our um, in work situation. Mm-hmm. So kind of going back to you know the first example um that that not only helped this individual realizing how he was treating other people but that flows into into his personal life Mm -hmm. into his family life Uh, it's it's the whole person it's you bring all of it you know you're bringing all of it to work you're bringing all of it to life um so it can really not only help in a business setting but it helps in personal life so my philosophy really is kind of, if you look at the opposite way, it's looking at the person first okay, and developing the skill of the person, the awareness of the person, because that's who's showing up to work every day. So, so true. If you're not, if you're not a hundred percent with yourself, that's what you're bringing to work. Got right? it. It's true. Well, thank you so much. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. I know we got a little bit of a late start today, but uh, glad we got to cover mostly everything. Dr. Rhonda Rorig, how do we contact you? You can contact me on my website at careerbalance.org. You can email me at Rhonda, R-H-O-N-D-A, at careerbalance.org. Or trip the phone, give me a call, 920-960-8821. Perfect. Thank you so much. Pleasure having you here and back on the Zoom even better. Thanks so much. Looking forward to the next time we get to connect. Hopefully Zoom. I like the face to face. Sounds good. Have a good day. You too. Thank you so much. And to all of our listeners and viewers, stay tuned. We'll be right back and enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Coffee Talk. Reach out. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just 
knocked down. I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.